Shidduch round table. I am so excited to be here on your account. I am honored and I am interested in discussing with you, hearing your opinions and what you think about this topic. Are you truly open to your soulmate? Are you blocked in any way? Do you want to do that deeper work? Do you want to find out if you're blocked? I am here to discuss with you how we can know if we're blocked, right? Which is a lot of the time, a lot of singles will say this to me. They'll say, I don't know if I'm blocked. What's going on? I'm doing all the right things and I, it just is not happening. And so I really wanted to, I was invited to come on today. I'm really grateful to Shit Off Roundtable, such a great account, um, to really discuss this concept is, are we, are we blocked? How do we know if we're blocked or if it's just not the right time, right? And it's a really good question. I am Jackie Glazer, for those, that you, those of you who don't, don't know me. And you can jump over and have a look at my account. I've got a lot of stuff there on dating. I'm a dating coach, which is really not what I am. I'm not really a dating coach. I'm really, uh, well, I was joking with Elisa Benchalom the other day that I'm really a, a dating surgeon. But, um, but no one likes surgery. So I don't want to call myself a dating surgeon, but that's really what I do. I help people get to the root of what might be getting in their way from finding their person. And that's really what I want to talk about with you today. And that's what we thought would be helpful. Hello, everyone coming on. It's really, really great to see you all. Please, yeah, I love all the love hearts. Um, send me some love hearts if this resonates with you, if this is a concept or a topic that really is something you would like to explore a little bit more deeply. I know I get a ton of questions in the DMs about it. And um, it's really important because it's a balance, you know, it's a balance between knowing there's work to be done but knowing at the same time there's nothing intrinsically wrong with you and it's not because you're broken or there's something, you know, there's some problem that you're not married, right? It's not because there is something intrinsically flawed that you can't find your person, which is how a lot of singles feel. And I felt that way for many years. I got married in my 40s. I went through the pain of being single for many, many years. Don't worry, Lower Lane, it won't happen to you. Uh, to that age, I started only learning about Judaism at 30. I had nothing about my life was anything normal, but I really understand the journey of being single and all the pressures and all the judgment and all of that. If you haven't checked out the live I just did with Sephora Grodko called Enough with the Pressure, go check it out. It's on my feed. It was really powerful. A lot of singles felt that it was validating, acknowledging for them. And so what we're talking about here tonight is, is what is that balance between I need to do some work and I could be standing in my own way. I really could be standing in my own way. But at the same time, I need to know that I'm lovable, worthy, awesome and good and deserve a fantastic person to marry. And I don't want to settle on that. And so I'm I'm juggling between the two. You know, one of the things I always talk about is that you're single by design, not by punishment. You're single by design, not by punishment. This is not it is not because there's something wrong with you. It is not because you are broken. It is not at all because of that. How do I know? How do I know for sure? Right? I, I thought about this a lot. <laughs> I went through this for so long myself. It can't be that God is waiting for you to get to a certain level of wholeness, of perfection, of inner growth and shlemus for you to meet your husband or wife. Why? Because have you seen how many totally dysfunctional people are married? Like really, how many people are actually already married, but they have lots and lots of deeper issues? They do. Whether they're happily married or not, we don't know, but like they're married. So it can't, be, it can't be that only those people that have a certain level of growth and health and, and whatever it is, perfection, get married. It just can't be, right? So let's already off the bat, let's get rid of that, right? Let's get rid of that. Everyone's cracking up. Good. Let's get rid of that. Yeah, it's not because because there's so many dysfunctional couples. I'm not judging them, right? We've all got our stuff to work on, but there's so many more dysfunctional people than you, than you watching. There's many more dysfunctional people that are married. So let's just get rid of that Yetzirah, right? That there's something wrong with you. You're not lovable. You're never going to get married. Like, no, 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 no. That's the wrong pathway. It's not true. It's just not true. So then what is it? What is going on? And it doesn't mean that you're off the hook that you shouldn't do any work. That's not what it means. So what does it mean? It means there's somewhere that God has decided that this is better for you to achieve your potential right now, just today, to be where you are and wrestling with this issue, struggling with it to become your greatest self by design. It's, a, it's by design. 
There's something in this process of being single that you're getting that you don't realize you're getting and you don't want. I know you all just saying, shut up, Jackie. I just want to get married. I don't, I don't want to hear this. Right. And, and I get it. Uh, but, but it is true at the same time. It's true that you're building yourself. It's true that you're growing. It's true that you're becoming the person that you need to be to have the marriage that you want to have. You probably could get married now to someone that wouldn't make you very happy. You probably could. And we don't want you to, right? And God doesn't want you to because we want you to have the marriage that you want, right? The type of marriage. And in order to do that, sometimes you have to do a little bit of work on yourself to get to that next level. And at the end of your lifetime, if you look back, I guarantee you, you'll be happy that you waited to get to a different level to have a different quality of marriage because marriage is for a very, very long time. And at the end of your lifetime, whether you got married now in six months, in one year or in two years, won't matter at all. It won't matter at all. I know it matters to you now, but it won't matter then. And it would have been better had you used this time to build yourself, to be able to then get married in a way that was like so much more fulfilling for you. Not only that, you get to deal with all your stuff outside of marriage now when you're single that you would have brought into marriage and that you, it's much harder to deal with in marriage because you've got a million things going on and juggling and you've got each other triggering each other because you're living together. You can't get away. Right? You're just in each other's face all the time. And then you have to process yourself on, the, on top of that. So, so it, is, it is much better having from experience, I'm saying this, even though no, nothing will take away the pain that I had waiting. Nothing will take that away. Like I, I can tear up thinking about it, right? Years and years of pain. Nothing takes it away. But I will say I'm grateful for the fact that I worked on myself outside of marriage and was able to have far less issues that I know I would have had had I got married earlier based on you know, who I was and what I was working on and blah, 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 right? So that, that's, that's number one, single by design, not by punishment. And it's really important to change your mindset on that right now because God loves you. There is a plan. You're in the middle of a story. It's McGillis Esther. You're in the middle of a story and you don't know the outcome. You cannot jump to the outcome. You cannot. The biggest weapon our Yetzirah has is projecting into the future, into the worst case scenario, right? Anxiety is a result of focusing on what we don't want to happen. That anxiety is a result just of focusing on what we don't want to happen. Like, and we just keep focusing on that, the worst case scenario. And then we feel more anxious and then we feel despair. So you're not allowed to jump into the future because the future is unknown. You have to stay in the present, the present, stay in the present. Right now, this is where I need to be to achieve my potential. And... Are we truly open? This is the, this is the most important thing because I get a lot of people that say, I want to get married. I really want to get married. But then when we look deeper down inside, there's a part of them that's scared of that at the same time. And so they have an inner conflict. Part of them wants it and part of them is resisting it or scared. Or they're scared they're going to mess up or they're scared they're going to fail or they're scared they're going to be rejected or they're scared they're going to wake up inside the marriage and the guy's going to be or the woman's going to be like totally not who they thought they were. All of these are real fears and valid. They're very valid fears. So then what happens if part of you wants to get married and another part's really scared? What happens and where does that come from, right? So it can come from a number of things. It can come from seeing your parents' marriage. There's something aspect, even if you love them to bits, there's some aspect of your parents' marriage you don't want to repeat and you're scared you will. It can come from just feeling rejected as a kid um, and feeling that I'm not lovable just as I am, right? For all sorts of reasons. Again, we're not talking extremes. It could be also loving, healthy families that you, you walked away with this belief system about you. There can be lots of reasons why I'm scared of marriage. Here's the thing though. The limiting belief that we have about ourselves and about marriage and about who we can trust and who's safe and all these things is living in the subconscious. The subconscious is the part of the brain we're not aware of. It's the part of the brain that stores up every experience we had that was meaningful. And it searches your life like a radar. They call it the reticular activating system. If you want some psychobabble, reticular activating system that is scanning your life for familiar experiences so that it can say, ah, I knew I was right. So what, how does that look in dating? I'm scared of getting rejected. So I go on a date because I'm really scared of getting rejected because maybe as a kid, I always felt everyone was too busy that I never really felt seen, even though they all love me. Like I just felt always that like I wasn't really fully embraced and loved and seen. So I feel deep down, I feel like I was always rejected or I wasn't good enough or whatever it was that's playing out in your belief system. So I go on a date and I assume I'm going to have that same experience here. So I go out guarded because I don't want to feel rejected. It's the worst feeling in the world. 
So your subconscious will protect you and it will guard you on a date. And what does that look like? It looks like everything's great. I have no needs. Everything's perfect. Or it looks very matter of fact, or it looks like drilling like interview questions, or it can look like analyzing, editing the whole time you're on a date. There's lots of different ways that we actually allow ourselves to not be there, right? We're not really present and we're definitely not open. We guard ourselves. And then what does that do with those different types of defense mechanisms, right? It's defending. It ends up in a lack of connection. So after the date, after one, two or three dates of this, firstly, it becomes tedious because no one's actually connecting and you're like looking at your watch under the table and you're like, can I get out of here now and call my friends? Can I go and get in my pajamas and just chill? Because I don't like this. This, this is whatever's happening here is stiff and awkward and it's like not, there's no connection happening. The person comes away and says, lovely person, lovely lady, lovely guy. I couldn't feel the connection, so I'm going to end it. So guess what? That person gets rejected. Self-fulfilling prophecy. The very thing that you wanted to avoid is actually happening now. So what I want you to do is I want you to do like a little inventory, cheshbon and nefesh inside of you about what your dating patterns are. Are there any patterns that are repeating in your life? Do you, meaning, do you get, how does this show up that I'm not really open? We're like, a, it's like a mirror, right? Your life is like a mirror. Talmud says we don't see things the way they are. We see things the way we are. We're, it's a lens and we look out of our lens into the world and the world often will reflect back what's, what's going on inside, right? And there's an alignment there. So one of the best things you can do is to own that and to be able to say, well, what patterns do I have going on? Because then I can change it. I can change something about it. It's empowering rather than victim, disempowering. I just have to wait around for some shakhan to call me and uh, hope for the best. And then the shakhans don't call or they call with terrible suggestions and you get more depressed and more despairing. So... What are your patterns? Meaning, do you get no dates? Some people, a lot of people I know will say crickets, crickets, zero, zero dates, not, nothing coming in for a year, two years, six months, whatever it is, right? Long time. That's one pattern. That's a pattern for you because the next person your age is getting dates. So what is it? Something's going on with you that is not resonating with a certain openness to, to receive dates. That can be a clue. That can be a clue. There's something to work on. Then there are bad dates. What happens if the only dates I'm getting are really bad for me? They're just not in alignment for me. They're totally out of my ballpark. So you have to ask yourself, am I in alignment with me? Am I in alignment? Where, which part of myself am I rejecting? Which part do I feel ashamed about? Which part am I not bringing to the table internally? Which part do I not accept in myself? How do I abandon myself? How do I betray myself? These are important questions that I know it's a bit heavy, but we're in Elul. So we're leading up to Rosh Hashanah. Like this is the most powerful, powerful month to change this stuff is right now, guys. You get extra divine assistance. It's a, such a powerful month that I really, really recommend um, that you, that you do, do, these, do these hard questions because it's harder to stay, to stay stuck. It's harder to stay stuck and feel depressed. And you're going into Rosh Hashanah again, and this time you could have a completely different year. So don't go into Rosh Hashanah saying, I can't believe I'm here again, which I did many years, so no judgment. Going to Rosh Hashanah saying, I can have a completely different year moving forward. This whole day, this whole two days of Rosh Hashanah, everything can change based on who I am going in. So do the work now. We're just a week into Elul. Do the work. Ask yourself honestly, what do I need to shift? Yeah, what do I need to shift? By the way, if you're interested in this work, I'm doing a free webinar Monday, August 28th. Um, and you can come on all about your inner child and how it hijacks your dating. We're going deep down. We're going to do some experiential stuff. It's off Instagram. It's on Zoom. So please um, sign up for it. There's a link in my bio on my account, Jackie Glazer Official. Have a look. I should just put my name there so you know how to spell it. For those of you that don't know, Jackie Glazer Official. Um, okay. So... Um, so please, please sign up, please come along and we'll do some deeper work together and you can get a taste of it. Um, but this is the time, this is the time to do the deeper work is to look inside and say, what are my patterns? Am I out of alignment with myself? Am I betraying myself? Do I not listen to myself? Do I not trust myself? What's going on there? Because then you'll get guys that aren't treating you the same way or women or depends who's listening, men or women or women, right? Another, another one is, do I go out on good dates, but I can't deepen the connection? Do I go out on good dates? But somewhere there's like a, a ceiling. Like I just can't move past that. That's another sign that you might not be open, right? I, I'm open to dating, but past a certain point of closeness, mm -mm, you're not getting in. I'm scared. I don't want you to reject me. I don't want to, 
I don't want to be hurt. I, 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 I don't want to make a mistake. I, no. So I'm going to, I'm going to protect myself. So I'm going to go out and say all the nice things and have fun with you. And it's going to be fun. But at some point I'm going to put a limit. That's important to ask if that's your pattern, meaning if that's happened a number of times, that's your pattern. You're the common denominator of a pattern. So why is it that you're getting that pattern, but the next person's not having that pattern, right? That, that's what we need to look at, honestly, with ruthless self-honesty, right? With compassion, not judgment. Get judgment out of there. No, judgment has no place. Judgment keeps you stuck, yeah? There's three things that keep you stuck. Judgment, suppression, and escapism. If you judge yourself, you'll stay stuck because as soon as you're judging yourself, you lock, lock down. You can't move. Suppression or repression means I don't want to feel what I'm feeling. I'm ignoring what I'm feeling. I'm just pushing it down. La, la, la. Everything's great. I don't want to feel anything. Keeps you stuck. And the final one, escapism, of course, keeps you stuck because you're just escaping whatever's going on all the time through food or to Netflix or shopping or whatever it is, right? Fantasy. So it's important to come home. Come home sometimes and ask yourself the question without judgment. Get judgment out of the question. Hi, Harvey. Hi, Kayla. Thank you so much. Yes, the seminars are hopefully helpful. Please come. Um, so how do, we, how do we do this? How do we work on ourselves? And what does, what does God want from us? What does Hashem want from us? He wants you not to give up. The test, a lot of the test is not giving up. Don't give up. You can take a break. If you need to take a break, take a break for a week or two. Not months, weeks. Take a break so you don't burn out, but come back. Yeah. Um, Okay, so if it's a pattern, it's yours. If it's a pattern, it's yours. It's part of your tikkun. It's part of what you're meant to work on. It's part of what you're meant to work on. It's by design. So if, if it's a pattern that you're noticing in your life, that's you. That's about you. That's about your, your need on your soul correction that you need to complete, that you need to work on right now outside of marriage to do. That's, like, that's part of what you're meant to be doing. So don't ignore it and just keep doing the same old, same old. My, the biggest challenge for singles as well is they just keep doing the same effort that they do, that they feel comfortable with, and they don't do the other parts of the effort that they need to, right? And I'm going to release a short course, a mini course soon for people just to do a checklist of like, what is all the kinds of effort that you should be putting in? Hishtadlut, right? What is the effort? And you need to do it on all different fronts at the same time. You need to do the spiritual effort. You need to do the emotional, psychological effort, which is what we're talking about right now. And you, need to, of course, need to do the practical of going on dates and going to shatrans and going on websites and whatever, singles events, whatever works for you. You don't have to do all of it, but you have to pick your effort that you're doing. And a lot of people do the practical effort, no problem. And more, a little bit of the spiritual effort or more, more or less, depending on the person. And I think less people do the inner work because it's harder to go there, right? Lech lecha, go to yourself. Go in, it'll be good for you. So, okay, so there's five areas and I'm happy to take questions, guys. Put some questions in the chat. Um, I'm really happy. I see some familiar people coming on. Hi, guys. Hi, Ariella. Um, so please, please feel free to put some questions in the chat. Happy to answer. Hi, Tanya. Um, and we will deep dive. There's five things that you need to be able to actually date effectively and smoothly. Five things, five key things. Number one is you need confidence navigating the dating system. So this looks like not taking negative uh, treatment from anyone, whether it be shatchans, whether it be friends, whether it be whatever it is. If people are speaking to you in any kind of disrespectful way or derogatory way, God knows he doesn't need them to make your shit off and God knows you don't. So you can walk away. There's so much fear if I, if I don't do what they want and if I don't you know, go along with the pressure, I'm gonna, they're not going to set me up. But that's just fear. I understand the fear is there, but don't give it power. God doesn't need that person to give you your shit off and you don't either. So you do it with absolute respect and dignity, but you do not need to be subject to such poor treatment because you're single. It, it, it literally is my pet peeve. I can't stand it. And people not respecting singles, uh, singles boundaries boundaries and when they say no and they say the guy's not right for me or the girl's not right for me like no it's not okay so if someone's treating you with disrespect walk away you need that confidence so you need to find that confidence as you're navigating the dating world you need to know what to ask you need to know how how um to, to navigate researching all that kind of stuff that's number one number two is clarity you need clarity what are you looking for? You would be shocked at how many people don't know what they're really looking for. Vague, vague things. Good Mido, Spentora, 
Come on. It's like vanilla. I call that vanilla resumes. No, get rid of the vanilla resume and write a resume or a profile that is reflective of you, that will give someone an idea of who you are, right? Your personality, put in some personalities, some specifics, like put in something that you enjoy, what you enjoy doing, like something a little bit about your, make it light, make it a little bit funny, right? If you're, if you're you know, outside the, those classic shit off worlds, obviously then it's not as funny, but, but put something in there that to, to gives someone a description if you're writing a bio or, or a profile. Um, so clarity, you have to have clarity about what you're looking for. In order to have clarity, you need to know yourself. You need to know who you are, that you can't get away from it. You have to know who you are, right? And that means what you like, what you don't like, what you're willing to tolerate, what you're not willing to tolerate. I always suggest to singles to make a list of flaws you can live with. They're like, what? Flaws, flaws you can live with. Everyone's going to have flaws. You have flaws. So what are the flaws that you can live with? You're like, I don't know. I never thought about that. Right. So I want you to make a list of the flaws that you can live with, right? Can you live with someone messy? Can you live with someone who's late? Can you live with someone who's, who's got a quick temper? Can you live with someone who is um, a slob? Can you live with someone who is super neat all the time? Can you live with someone who is loud? Can you live with, so, like, there's so many things that you have to think about. What, what flaws can I live with, tolerate? Right, that's a really good, a really good idea for, as far as clarity, right? Clarity, what are my values? What am I looking for? Where am I going? What are my deal breakers? What can I not live with? Absolutely not live with at all. And what are my non-negotiables? They must have these things before me to even think of dating them. So you need to know those things. You need to, need to think long and hard about those. Some people aren't clear on them. You have to work them out. So clarity is another one. Number three, inner peace. Inner peace is, doesn't have to be all totally perfect, but inner peace means you can quieten yourself down enough to show up and be present and available on a date. That you can actually be there present. That you're not like looking around and distracted and like thinking all the time. Like, because you know those friends you have where you go out for, for lunch or something and you're with a friend and then you feel like they're not really there, right? So you can be like that on a date. So you have to have enough ability to calm yourself down to, and your anxiety, especially if you get anxious going on dates, you have to be calm to be able to um, be present and connect. And if you're not, then you need to work on that. You need to learn how to do that. That's something I teach people how to do, right? How do you do that? You can learn to sit with yourself. A lot of the time, our inner angst and anxiety is not about what you're feeling. It's how you respond to how you're feeling. So I feel a certain feeling and then it's my response to that feeling in my thoughts and my feelings and my actions that make that inner state worse, right? So if you learn how to change your response to your feelings, you'll notice it shifts immediately, powerfully. So that's what I love to teach people because they just go, oh my gosh, I'm so calm. One of the most common things outside my course is that I feel so calm. It's weird. I've never gone on a date like this, ever. I've never been on a date calm and I'm just calm, I'm okay. It's okay if they say yes, it's okay if they get rejected, it's just okay, everything's fine. And so when you're in that mode and you take the pressure off, you can be yourself, you can be authentic, you feel secure, you can be open. This is what we need to date. You need this to date. You can't really date and develop a connection if you don't have the ability to get into that state of being present and open and available, right? Which is hard because with singles, you can take a battering and you can then have to you know, shut down to protect yourself. Um, number four, self-worth um, is super important. If you don't have value yourself deeply, and again, you cannot fake this stuff. This is not about being told what to do. You know what to do. Every person I've ever worked with has said, I know I need more self-worth, or I know I need more self-inner peace, or I know I need more clarity. I just don't know how to get it, right? Or many people have said, I've done therapy. I've worked on myself. I've read books. I've done lots of stuff. I have a lot of insight, a lot of awareness. I know where it comes from. I know what my issues are. I know why they're there. Can't change how I feel. Why? It sits at the subconscious level. So you have to learn how to, how to respond differently to yourself. That's what's going to change the feeling, right? Again, very teachable, very easy to learn. I can teach you this stuff. Um, and we're going to do some of it on my free webinar Monday, August 28th. So please go sign up and on my bio in my um, link tree. So... That's um, self-worth. To the degree that you value yourself is the degree of value you generally typically 
attract and resonate with. So if someone is treating you disrespectfully on some level, if you keep going out with them and being with them, you're tolerating that. You're tolerating that disrespect. By tolerating it, you're teaching that person that they can continue teaching, treating you that way. And this goes with not just dates, this goes with any type of relationship. People will take advantage of your boundaries as long as you can't set those boundaries. If you say, I, I'm sorry, I can't do that, or I'm sorry I, that, you know, I, I really can't, uh, I don't like to be spoken to that way, or that hurts when you speak to me that way, and it's, you know, it's not okay with me. If you can speak to people that way, in a respectful way, they will stop treating you that way. So it's what you tolerate about yourself. And you'll only tolerate things for, about yourself if you value or not value yourself. So it comes down to really doing a deep dive inside yourself. Yes, we're saving this on Shidduch Roundtable. Um, we're, 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 we're going to do a deep dive in ourselves to really look at what makes me worthy. Why am I worthy? Who said? Right? Okay. We hear everyone's worthy, right? But if you look around society, it's the people who seem like they have more looks, more power, more fame, more status, more money, more this, more intelligence. Those are the people that seem more valuable. So what makes little old me worthy? You know? And the answer is because you have a neshama and you really need to tune into that neshama. And if you don't know how to tune into your soul, to your neshama, to your higher self, it's very hard to feel worthy. It's very hard because that is where our worth comes from. That's intrinsically connected to Hashem. So it sounds all conceptual and ethereal when you say it like this, just sitting here talking with you, but it is, it is not. It is not, it is not ethereal. You can absolutely learn to tap into your higher self and feel connected to Hashem. And that's what I teach people also. We call it soul mode, how to get back into your higher self mode. And then even when you get knocked off and you get triggered, you can come back, right? You can come back to that place. It's usually the observer, the position of the observer, observing what's happening. When you're in observation mode, you're in your higher self mode, right? There's always another level watching what we do. And it's like, I don't think you should do that. Um, maybe, maybe you shouldn't do that, right? That little small voice in that head that comes from the soul, that higher, that higher place, right? The still small voice, the Gemara calls it. So self-worth, how you treat yourself is often sets a precedent or a standard for how you get treated and what you tolerate, right? We want to be able to change that. And finally, the fifth thing that is really, really key to dating easily and making sure that you're open is self-trust. Self-trust. Again, one of the most common things that, that I get as, goal, as far as goals people want out of coaching is self-trust. I don't trust myself to make the big, biggest decision of my life. I don't tr it's so scary. It's so scary to make this big decision. Like, how do I know it's right? And there is a way you can know it's right. And the fact, the problem is it exacerbates all of the problems because people run around and they go and get lots of opinions from everyone, right? Or their friends and their mentors and their this and their rabbis. No one else can tell you who to marry or not. No one. They can help you weigh it up. They can help how you think about it. But no one can make that decision for you but you. And if you're terrified to make that decision because you don't trust yourself, that can be a stumbling block. That can really make you close down because it's just, I just can't get close to the point where I need to make that decision because I don't trust myself. So you need to learn how to trust yourself. And one of the ways we do that is I teach people how to tune into their head, which is logical and practical, and then their heart, which is more about love, giving love and receiving love. Does it inspire you? Does it expand you, right? Do you feel loving and giving like you want to give love and receive love? And your gut, your gut is security, stability. Um, if do you feel safe? And the, these are three different faculties completely that have different experiences and different feedback and if you know how to tap into each one in a quiet place in yourself you'll get different feedback i had a client recently who was older late 30s and she really wanted to get married obviously and she was with a guy and it wasn't going so well and we did this head heart gut exercise and her head said practically yes it makes sense that she's with this guy and her heart said no it doesn't make sense she's with this guy so then we asked the heart and we said, well, what would need to happen for this to be a yes in the heart? What would your heart need to say yes in this situation? And our heart answered very clearly, he'd have to be a different person. He's not available emotionally. And she got her answer. She got her answer that that, that was a deal breaker no. Sometimes no's are not no's, they're just no for right now. And you can ask what would need to happen for it to get to be a yes. This was like, he just would have to be a different person. He's just not available. 
And she broke it off that night and it was the right decision. It was the right, and God forbid she would have got married to this guy because she was so scared of being alone. It's not the right guy for her, right? So she got, but she had total clarity after that, that, that this is not right. And so that's really possible. It's really possible to learn how to trust yourself and to learn that your body gives you feedback in your sensations and your feelings that are essential and valid. Like whatever your body's telling you, it's for a reason. Your body has no other agenda other than just to, to help you and align with you. And we have to work as a team with the head, all right, the higher self, the head and the heart and the body. It has to work all together. If you're in alignment with yourself, you'll get all the feedback you need to make the right decision. But if you're not, let's say you're just in your head and you're very intellectual or analytical and you're just thinking of the pros and the cons. So you're just going to make yourself dizzy because you're going to be able to see the pros and the cons of every different way, right? You're going to say, well, he's got this good point, but he's at this and he has this good point and that. And you're just going to go round and round and round and wonder if you should just turn yourself into a pretzel and marry the guy or the woman. And that's not going to help you. The thing you, you can't possibly know from the head because the head needs the heart. Marriage is so subjective. It's so subjective. It's so based on your internality that no one else can tell you that you have to be in touch with it. And if you're not in touch with it, then I am scared for you because then you're not making a decision based on all of you. You're making a decision just on some of you. And so you must learn how to connect. Your heart is, a, is, is, is an asset for you. Your heart guides you. It's like, a, it's like the rudder, right? It has to, everything has to lead from the head, but it has to go through the heart. It has to go through the body. Your body has to feel aligned and safe and say yes. Like one of the things I like asking people when they're dating is, do you feel like you can be yourself around him or her? Do you think you can, do you feel safe emotionally to be yourself? Can you be open right now? If it's a no, we have to explore why. Is it because you're shutting yourself down or something they're doing makes you feel that way? So we have to, we have to look at that. So um, please feel free to put in your questions. I'm opening up to Q&A now. Someone wrote, I have a question. How do you know if it's the right one, if the... If it's the right one, the guy is not the same religious as me. So it's very hard to have uh, a marriage with big differences in religion. Uh, it's, is it possible? Yes, there's always exceptions. And people tried to set me up all the time with really secular guys and told me like there's this one example. Um, Natan Sharansky is not, for, not observant and he married a, a very firm lady and they make it work. But no, 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 don't do that. Don't do that. Very, very hard. You have to be really aligned on the big three. Shabbos, kosher, tar, taras, mishpacha. That's the family purity. You have, to be, you have to be aligned on the big three because they affect both people in the marriage at all times, pretty much. Right? And, and if one's on board and one's not, it's very hard. So those big three need to be aligned. If one wants it and one doesn't, it's very, very hard. So I would say that th that religious level needs to be the same. Lots of other things are flexible and, and you can accommodate and be adaptable right? Prayer is between that person and God. So it doesn't affect directly the other person the same way. Dress is between that person and God. Yes, it has a, an impact in the community, but again, it doesn't directly affect the husband or the wife in the same way. Um, there's a lot of things that you can work with as people are growing and, and whatever, but those big three, I think are the, the deal breakers, right? Shabbat, kosher, taras mishpacha, family purity. You need to be on the same page. So I hope that helps. Um, and it's really hard once you're already attached to someone to, to end it for that reason. But believe me, it, in the long run, it's going to be difficult. So any other questions, comments? If someone is orthodox, another is modern. So if the orthodox is willing to, to, to bridge that gap of that, that, that Ashgar, or both, actually it's both. If both are willing to bridge the gap, then of course it can work. You know, you have to, the biggest challenge in that situation is going to be where are you going to settle? What community are you going to be in? Where are you going to send your kids to school? It's all the practical applications. Can two people live together happily like that? Absolutely, 100%. But when it comes to kids, when it comes to community, when it comes to where you're living, you're going to have to choose one type of community or another, generally, unless there's a more eclectic community, that could be also. Um, depends where you live in America. But um, in general, yes, it's, it becomes even more, a little bit more problematic with the kids. But is it doable? It's doable. Would I, would I advocate for it in advance? No. I wouldn't say go for it. But if you've already met someone and it feels everything else is aligned, I wouldn't say break up because of that reason alone, unless you feel it's, there's certain really important values that differ that are really important to you. Then you don't want to sacrifice those. It depends. There's a lot of nuances there and complexities that are important. Um, 
so yeah just taking q a if you're interested um, if you want to join my webinar free webinar monday august 28 which is on your inner child how does it hijack your dating your inner child is a part of you it's a part of every single person that carries those fears and those worries and those doubts and they came from usually valid things that happened in your childhood that you don't have to go back and rehash everything but they're not in your childhood they're right here right now and they're playing out like whether it's a sense of dread every time you get suggested someone or when you go on a date you see things feel super anxious no matter what you tell yourself there's certain things running under the surface in your body that are related to the inner child the inner child is a part of you it's not all of you it's a part of you that feels scared that feels isolated that feels sort of it was left out in the past you pushed it in the back i don't want to know about it but it keeps coming up in your present life and it's coming up because it wants you to look at it it wants you to work with it it wants you to acknowledge it become conscious of it and when you do that when you can actually connect with that part of you that feels that way and you do it from your higher self from a higher place and you have a dialogue it starts to heal and once you start to connect with it it no longer hijacks you even if it hasn't healed yet even if it hasn't healed yet but you know where it is and you know what it is and you know how to talk to it and how to connect to it it will no longer hijack your dating and that is liberating right that is liberating that's what i like to teach people in my course i have a nine-week course please feel free to um, jump on a free call with one of us with myself or my team and we will tell you we will tell you all about it we will sh discuss with you how it can help you um, to shift these deeper blocks i really started this course because i felt there was nothing like it really in the jewish world that deals with the subconscious level and also teaching you how to do it for yourself that's really my passion that i really believe in nine weeks i've seen it many many times i can teach people generally how to work with themselves in this way so that they can just have a much higher level of emotional and spiritual intelligence which is a, a really important investment as a as a person as a wife as a husband as a as a parent so it's really really important for for yourself to just generally have a sense of happiness and peace right if you're not happy and peaceful in yourself it's very hard to date from that place because that's not attractive it's not attractive if you really don't like yourself or if you're rejecting yourself or you feel anxious or you're so negative or doubtful and um yeah so any other questions before i sign off um i would love to be able to be here for you guys and to help you in any which way and um Someone just wrote, what's some good ways to figure out what your gut is saying? Ah, okay, that's a good one. What are some good ways to figure out what your gut is saying? So in order, my pleasure, Javi, in order for you to feel, figure out what your gut is saying, you have to know one thing, your gut is not fear. So if you're feeling fear, it's not your gut. Your gut feeling is a sense, it's not a, an emotion. It's a little sense like a, mm, you know when you walk in the room and you're like oh something feels off or you walk in the room and it's like yes something's awesome like there's a yes whoosh that's gut sense right Bina so what's really really important is to know that if you feel anxious or you feel scared that's not your gut feeling that's number one and a lot of people confuse that number two is your gut feeling is you know in your belly but you can actually tune in and say what is my gut saying what is my gut saying and you take your attention all the way down to your gut and you can ask your gut with your attention on your gut right and you say what what you know what what are you telling me here what is my gut my, what is my gut feeling saying and it, it may tell you it may not depends if you're in touch with yourself but um but when you what i teach people as to trained in somatic psychotherapy which after i, I became a psychologist and what is very easy to teach people is how to tune into their body and how to um, keep your attention on a specific body part that's giving you a message, like a sensation, like a knot in your stomach or a tension in your chest or something like that. And when you have that sensation, you take your attention to the sensation, where it is at the body, and you ask that part of your body just like it's another person. You ask it a question and you keep your attention on it gently and it will pop an answer into your head straight away. And usually it's accurate, very, very accurate. Um, if you keep your attention there, sometimes you can jump back into your head and analyze and come up with ideas in your head. And so that's where you have to really work with a coach just to learn what it feels like to do either or, but it's very easy to teach. And when you can tune into your body and into the different parts that are trying to communicate with you, because the body reflects the subconscious. That's a really important piece. There's a book, do I have it here? Uh, no, 
that's upstairs. The Body Keeps the Score. And The Body Keeps the Score is a book that, sh- that talks all about this, that, that the body sensations reflect what's going on in the subconscious. So if you want to get into your subconscious, we go through the body. And it's much easier to do that because the body is more obvious. So I love teaching people that. And um, I'm happy to discuss more with you. Thank you for having me, Shidduch Roundtable. It's been great to be here. I hope this has been helpful. Hope this has been insightful. It's Elul. Please continue growing and looking within. And, and Hashem should bless everyone with their zivug very, very, very quickly, very, very soon with clarity, with peace, and seeing Hashem's hand guiding you the whole way, knowing that you're single right now by design, not by punishment, and that Hashem loves you very much. You should have a sweet new year with revealed goodness and joy. And please let me know when you get engaged. I'd love to, or if you want to talk to me before, you could talk to me before too. And I will see hopefully some of you um, on the webinar on a Monday. Okay, have a good night.